guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Heather. I am a homeschooling mom of three kids. We are going into our 11th year of homeschooling. I am the owner and author behind townsendhouse.com where I help you implement systems and strategies in order to overcome the chaos and cultivate simplicity in your home and homeschool. Today is going to be a fun day. I am going to be sharing with you all of the homeschool curriculum and resources that we will be using for eighth grade for my oldest daughter. And um, this is going to be everything that I can think of that we are going to use this year. Will there be adjustments through the year? Absolutely. But um, I think that this is going to be most of the materials. Now, we are literature-based homeschoolers, which means we read a lot of books, and if that is not your thing, that's totally okay. Um, there are so many wonderful ways to homeschool. This is what works best for us, so if you see that we are just reading way too many books for your family, that's, you know, just let that go. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to share everything <laughs> that I can think of um, and I will walk you through what we are planning for the 2021-2022 homeschool year. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you part of the instructor's guide. Now, this obviously is not the sunlight binder that it comes in. I have just taken out the first eight weeks of some of the instructor's guides, mainly for prepping purposes. I will eventually get all of my instructor's guides ready, but I do like to familiarize myself with most of this information before we start the year. Um, I've already ripped out a page. <laughs> from this, which was awesome. So uh, it has all of the books that we're going to be using this year. And then I love sunlight because it does have these wonderful grids for scheduling. However, this is our 12th level, I believe, with sunlight. So we do not follow this exactly as it is written. Um, I do use the order of the books and I do use all of the discussion questions and all of the information that is found in the instructor's guide, I do use. However, I do not schedule my days the same way. This says, you know, day one and this is everything for day one, then day two. because. In the past, I have found that we spend more time doing read-alouds or we will read a little bit faster. And in some of the lower levels, there were several books that we were reading out of at once for read-alouds. My kids weren't as much of a fan of that um, as just reading one book at a time. So I have adjusted and that is what works for me. I know that a lot of people love to check off the boxes and I think that's great and I do actually check off the boxes when we're done. We do get usually the five-day program because I like to have the extra books but I use my teacher planner and I plan out everything that has worked for us in the past since we have juggled between two and three different levels uh, most years. So uh, that is what works for us. But I do love that it has all of the notes and the discussion questions and the order of everything. Um, and we we love, 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 love this. It's, it's something that has worked really well for us over the past um, 10 years. And so that is what we do. Now it has the instructor's guide, which is history, Bible, literature. And then it has um, reading assignments and notes for the read alouds, as well as the language arts program. Um, now, if you watched my video yesterday on Brave Writer, or when you're watching this, I do have a Brave Writer video, and we do mostly Brave Writer for language arts. However, I do still use the readers from um, Sunlight for extra books. So we also do the discussion for the readers. And then I do use some of the language arts activity sheets. This is just how we have done it. It depends on the week. 
If we like the, um, the writing project in the language arts, we will do it. Um, sometimes we use different copywork passages. It really just depends on the week, and that's why I do all of my planning weekly. So I have all of the resources that we're going to be using for Emma this year that I'm going to share, but then I adjust the schedule to make it work for us. So um, these, are, these are just all of the instructor's guides. There's also Level H Science, which we're going to be doing. Um, and then I also have Lucy's stuff in here as well. So <laughs> that is just the instructor's guides. They are great. They are filled with all kinds of wonderful information. So first I am going to share what we are going to be using for Bible with Emma this year. Now Bible is something that we do tend to do as a family. Um, my kids do have uh, daily devotions that they do. I got this three minute devotions for teen girls. It's just a tiny little book. I got off of christianbook.com. I think it was like $3. Uh, just a little verse and a daily reading and a prayer at the bottom, which I think will be good for her. Just something to concentrate for herself. And then we have Philip Yancey, Disappointment with God, Three Questions No One Asks Aloud. Philip Yancey, What's So Amazing About Grace, and then Nancy Piercy, or Percy, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Finding Truth, Five Principles for Unmasking Atheism, Secularism, and Other God Substitutes. So these we will just read a little bit each day, um, most likely in the morning during breakfast, I will just read a little bit from um, these three books, one at a time, and then also from Jack and Emma's, no, and also from Jack and Lucy's books as well, which you will see in different videos. Now I have this giant stack of books. <laughs> these are all history books that we will read this year. This year, I am combining Jack and Emma with a history of science. Um, he will listen to all of the books, Emma will be required to do all of the work. So this there's going to be a little bit of overlap between Emma's books and Jack's books, but um, I'm going to share, this is everything that Emma will be using this year for history. This is Sunlight's Level J package, and the Bible books also came from the Level J package. So Longitude, The Clockwork Universe, Stuff Matters, Archimedes and the Door of Science, Ida Scudder, which is one of the Christian heroes then and now books. Sunlight has one of these, I think, pretty much with every level that they sell. So these are really great. The Mystery of the Periodic Table, Interpreting Genesis 1 with Integrity. I think this is part of the history. Evolution 2.0, Breaking the Deadlock Between Darwin and Design. String, Straight Edge, and Shadow, The Story of Geometry. Bomb, The Race to Build and Steal the World's Most Dangerous Weapon. And then these are mostly the spine, I believe. Uh, these Story of Science by Joy Hakim. Um, the Story of Science, Aristotle Leads the Way, Newton at the Center, and Einstein Adds a New Dimension. We used uh, Level 100 last year for Emma, and um, it was the same author who did A History of Us, I think is the name of the series. <laughs> we read it last year, you'd think I would remember it. Um, and we really enjoyed all of those books, so I'm interested to hear these. And also, these are on, um, I believe, Hoopla and Audible. So Hoopla is through the library and is free. Um, obviously, Audible is a subscription. But um, sometimes, if there is too much reading for me, I do use audiobooks, especially for um, some of the history stuff because it is just a little bit easier for me. And then we have Censored Science, The Suppressed Evidence, and Book of Nature Poetry. And actually, I think this is part of the readers. This is not 
or the read alouds. This is not part of the history program, but I had it in the wrong pile. Um, so I will share the read alouds next. So again, another big stack of read alouds. As a literature based program, we obviously spend a lot of time reading. So um, it just it's something that we do all year. In fact, we are almost, we're about halfway through Holes, which is the first book in the, the that we're supposed to read aloud for Jay, but we have already started. That is actually one of my tips for literature-based homeschoolers is to do some of the read alouds at other points in the year. So we started this, um, two days ago and we are halfway done. I'm hoping to finish it by this weekend so that we can watch the movie with the kids. Penny from Heaven, Mr. Max and the Book of Lost Things, A Ring of Endless Light, Soar, Half a Chance, fish in a tree and you will notice that this is actually one of the arrows from Brave Writer. If you watch my Brave Writer video, this is one of the books that we will be doing for um, Brave Writer this year. Shakespeare's Secret, Bell Prater's Boy or Prater, I'm not sure, Code Talker, a novel about the Navajo Marines of World War II, the Mozart season and Echo. And this is also another book that Emma is going to be doing, I believe, a boomerang um, for Brave Writer this year. Now for the readers, you will see some crossover between Brave Writer. Um, there are a few books that Emma is either in the process of reading. Um, she's currently reading Catching Fire. Um, so that won't be in here and you won't see the Hunger Games or um, the Green Ember because we have already read those and they're not actually part of this reader section. But these are all the other books that she will be reading this year in addition to what she chooses to read on her own. I know it may seem like a lot of reading. Um, it is a lot of reading. If she tends to get bob bogged down with some of the books, then what I do is I do look for an audio version. She does read most of the books, uh, you know, from the actual book, but sometimes I will get her the audio book version so that she has a break from staring at books. And I count that as reading as long as she is able to answer the discussion questions and um, do the work that is required, uh, that totally counts as well. So first book, A Christmas Carol. This is going to be in part of her Brave Writer program this year. Treasure Island, Enchantress from the Stars, The Thief, Great American Short Stories, and this is actually not part of the Sunlight Readers. This is a book that I purchased for Brave Writer that she's going to be doing. This is the Dover Thrift Editions, uh, and she opened it up, and some of these stories are only a couple of pages, and she was very excited about that. Oh, I can finish the whole thing quickly. Um, we haven't done a whole lot of short stories in our homeschool yet, so this will be good. The Westing Game, the Teacher's Funeral, a comedy in three parts. The Phantom Toll Booth. this is another uh, arrow that we're going to be doing this year. The Wolves of Willoughby Chase. Everything on a Waffle. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Tales. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. And actually, we're not going to be reading this this year because we read this um two years ago and we did the arrow that goes with it if she wants to read it again she can but i'm not going to assign this for her this year um going solo the gamage cup pictures of hollis woods which none can shut the giver and, and I believe this is also a boomerang that Emma's going to be doing. The And the Outlaws of Sherwood. So these are all of the readers that she will be doing um, that makes up 
her English and language arts. And I will share, we do have a few other things for English and language arts that we do um, that I will grab. So the first is going to be this Curse of Success Handwriting Without Tears. And this is actually for a much younger grade level. But um, Emma did cursive, I think in third grade, but then we never continued with it. We just did the one book and moved along. But I think that it'll be good for her to practice a little bit and just work on her handwriting. Um, this is not going to be anything too difficult. It's just going to be, you know, maybe one page a day or something just to get them. Uh, Jack and Emma are both going to be doing cursive just to have something to do first thing in the morning that does not take me uh, being involved. And, and actually it works out well because when they're doing their handwriting, Lucy can also do her handwriting without tears. And then I found this on um, the Evan Moore website. It's just daily language review. And each day there is just a little activity um, to practice. And I thought that this would be good for um, really just review. And if they're just doing a couple of sentences each day, I don't think it's going to be a whole lot more work. And I think that it will be good for them. Now, I've never used this particular book before the language review. This is for grade eight. Um, so we will see how it goes. If it does not go well, it was not an expensive workbook. We don't do a whole lot of workbooks, but I, I thought, you know, with Emma going into high school next year, I just think getting a little bit extra practice is a good idea. Um, so we will see how this goes. Now, this Analogies One is a book that was part of Emma's curriculum last year, and we really just did not have time to fit it in. Um, there was, last year, I feel like the Level 100 was probably the most reading that we have had to do. Um, obviously, it is an upper level core, uh, or HBL, I think they're called now. Um, so we could not fit this in, but it, I do really like the, the program. I think that this is just good practice for analogies and just understanding uh, the connection between words. So we will see how it goes. It's not a very long book, and I think that we just do like one page a day or like one page every couple of days. It's I think that was how it was scheduled in in the other level. I will have to look and see. But uh, problem solving, analysis, vocabulary study, I think all of that is really important. Um, and then lastly, I have uh, Wordly Wise 3000 uh, vocab and she just does, you know, one page a day. So, um, you know, 2A on Monday, 2B on Tuesday, and um, goes throughout the whole, the whole book. Some of the days are a little bit longer when you have to read and answer qu questions, um, write out questions, but honestly, it doesn't take the kids that long and they really enjoy these workbooks. So we will continue to use them. This is uh, book eight. And this was one more thing. This is actually a book that my friend gave me a couple of Christmases ago, um, 300 more writing prompts. And I love this book. It always gives me ideas on things to write about. Um, I don't write in the book itself. I tend to have other journals that I write in so that I can reuse it. Um, we are planning on doing a little bit of writing each morning with the kids, all of us together at the table. And if they can't come up with an idea, they will be able to pick um, an idea from here, as well as um, I'm going to print out Brave Writer. Julie on, um, on Instagram shares uh, writing prompts every Friday for Friday Free Write. So I'm going to type out a bunch of those, cut them up and put them in a ball jar so that the kids can grab one if they are trying to think of something to write about. But this is just, you know, a daily exercise of writing. My kids do a lot of writing anyways, but this is going to be more, um, more, I'm not, I can't even say formal because it's writing prompts, but um, 
a little bit more dedicated instead of just writing whatever they want whenever they want, which is also fine. And I, I definitely want them to continue doing that, but this is just going to be a little bit more writing. Now for science, um, I am doing level H with sunlight, which is, what is it called? It is called Level H Conservation Robotics and Technology. It is only a four day program. Um, and I am combining both Jack and Emma for this science and mainly because I know that the topics are really interesting to Jack. So I, I'm hoping that it goes well. I do have the extra worksheets. This is technically for grades, I think eight to 10, um, but a lot of this stuff he is really interested in. So I'm crossing my fingers anyways. So the first book is Robotics, Discover the Science and Technology of the Future. And there are projects that they go through and work on um, that they will do together because I only bought one lab kit. Energy, investigate why we need power and how we get it. Planet Earth, finding balance on the blue marble with environmental science activities for kids. So again, there's experiments in here, things that they can do. Um, I think I saw something about burying trash maybe and like seeing what happens. So that'll be interesting. The Industrial Revolution with 25 projects, investigate how science and technology change the world. So honestly, I think that my kids are just going to devour this science curriculum. Garbage, follow the path of your trash with environmental science activities for kids. And this one is probably where you're going to be burying the garbage. Um, but I think, you know, it has words to know, it has uh, colorful pictures and different experiments. And um, I think this is going to be so much fun. Canals and dams investigate feats of engineering. Usborne weather and climate change. I love all these Usborne books. We have tons of them from um, the earlier science levels. And then super cool tech, technology, invention, innovation. Um, I really think the kids are going to enjoy this science curriculum this year. Um, and then I did get the, the science lab kit to go with it, science supplies kit, and it just has a bunch of stuff. It looks like clay and rubber tubing and syringes and cups and pinto beans. I don't know why pinto beans, wire, uh, yeast, uh, all kinds of stuff. What you will need to create whatever we're doing for the labs, which Thankfully, my kids are pretty self-sufficient when it comes to the lab stuff because it is not my jam. So, but I think that this is going to be a lot of fun for them this year. I do have a few other things that I got for Emma. This is the Young Entrepreneur's Guide to Starting and Running a Business, Turn Your Ideas into Money. Um, I saw this on another YouTube video of um, curriculum books. And so I am planning on incorporating this into our Fridays where I will probably just read a little bit each week and go through it. Um, if you watch my unboxing video when I unbox this, I did mention that this past year, Emma did Dave Ramsey's Foundations and Personal Finance for Middle School and um, they have an entrepreneurship class as well. I'm not sure if it's geared more towards high school, but it's something that Emma and Jack are both really interested in. So I thought that this would be a good um, starting point, and then we will see if it is something that, um, if, if they want to do the Dave Ramsey course. I don't think it's very long. I think it's like seven or eight hours of video um, with quizzes and, and um, other information as well. So 
this is not going to be something that we will probably finish this year um, but we will start it and see how it goes and if it's something that my kids are really interested in and they want to take the initiative to read ahead and work through things that is totally fine as well and then the last thing is Spanish one now Emma has wanted to do Spanish for many many years and I have not been able to really find anything besides Duolingo and so they have done both Emma and Jack have used Duolingo for a couple of years now not consistently um, so we will see how this goes this is the BJU press online um, Spanish one class this is a high school credit course I watched the sample video and I thought that it looked pretty good and I did take Spanish in both high school and in college so I feel like I can probably help her with Spanish one <laughs> um I, I mean I have not used it for many years we'll just we'll say that many years um, but I do remember quite a bit of it and I think that it will be good it is an online class but she does not have to be at the class at a specific time so she will be able to log on and I think the lessons are maybe 30 minutes each day and I think that it's like an everyday kind of thing so she is going to be doing Spanish 1 online this year and we will see how that goes um, I'm excited because I really enjoyed Spanish I had a wonderful Spanish teacher in both high school and college I loved both of them um, and so I'm excited for Emma to have the chance to work on this um, and also to get high school credit because that's what we're working towards. Um, and then the last thing, I don't know, did I say the last thing was Spanish? But you may have noticed that I did not have any math. Um, so <laughs> math this year is going to be a little bit different. Last year, Emma did, she finished pre-algebra with teaching textbooks around um, the beginning of November and then we take a big break between November, uh, December, and January from Thanksgiving to New Year's. We take a big break and um, because of that she did not start Algebra 1 really until January and then she did half a year of Algebra 1 with Matthew C and she did not care for it at all. So we also <laughs> we went back to teaching textbooks but now she is only halfway through algebra one so she is going to be finishing up algebra one with teaching textbooks and then i'm i'm thinking she will move right into geometry and we're just going to start rolling her math for high school um the way that i used to do it with the with the younger grades we have always used singapore in the early grades and um, when Singapore 6B ends, your child should be ready for Algebra 1, and Emma was. She tested into Algebra 1 with the placement test, but I wanted her to, um, you know, have some more percent and uh, fraction and decimal practice as well as some more pre-algebra because Singapore doesn't really talk about pre-algebra that much. So, all that to say she is going to be doing teaching textbooks algebra one and we are i think also going to start the beginner algebra life of fred series um and see how that goes i think she learns really well when she reads she pretty much memorizes things uh i don't know how she does it but that's a big help when she is able to do that. So I think the Life of Fred might be interesting. And also I have been really intrigued by Life of Fred for years, but have never even purchased any of the books. So we will see how that goes. But that is all of the, the books for Emma 
for 2021-2022. It's a lot of books, I know. It might feel overwhelming. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. If, you know, if we're reading a book and we don't like it, we have no qualms about stopping the book and picking up the next book. I learned long ago that we can slog through books that none of us like, but it is better to just move on unless it's like really, really important. If it's some, you know, if it's a math thing or uh, something like that, then obviously we want to continue. But if it's a book that I'm reading aloud that nobody likes, we will put it down and start the next one. So I hope that this was helpful and Thank you guys for watching. If you like curriculum videos, give this a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.